skip to what it is you wanted? Some of your food? Of course. Are Alvin's people causing you problems? Oh, yeah. They constantly demand my best, but the equipment I need to make my signature dishes isn't built for batch cooking. And don't get me started on the Olven discount they feel so entitled to. And if you refuse? I make meals, not trouble. How did you end up in Chainscrape? Heard about a new and upcoming town at the edge of the frontier. Where there's a town, there's a tavern. That was in need of work. So I got myself out here and started cooking. Some of these people had never tasted proper boars and berries stew before. Anyway, next thing I knew, people kept coming back. I guess they like my food. Or the ale. Your last customer mentioned your cooking really kept him going out in the wild. Where I'm headed, I could use some of that. I would be happy to oblige, especially since you have the decency to ask pleasantly. But... But my special groove griddle is no more. Without it, I can't cook any of my signature dishes. I hate to think what'll happen when I'm forced to refuse Olven or his goons. Even if I already had the right ingredients, there's nothing I can do. Unless you can source me a temporary replacement? What do you need? For the ingredients. A few pieces of decent wild meat, and I'd say a big handful of bitter leaf stems. That'll do. As for the griddle, a corrugated metal panel might suffice until I can have a new one forged. You'd likely find one in a scrounger pile if you follow the river to the northeast. Don't worry, I'll clean it first. <laughs> You'll have no issue finding boars and bitter leaf on your way, assuming you're as much a hunter-gatherer as your clothing suggests. Thanks, Smildaf. I'll keep an eye out. So that's what gratitude sounds like. And don't let anyone push you around, okay? If you say so. Need to hunt for some wild meat and grab a metal panel from a scoundrel pile. Hey, hey Ray. Change your mind about uh, that brew? Come to revel in some strike, sister? Let me set the board. I was just passing by. I. Mmm, first timer, huh? Don't worry about it. I'll go easy on you. You got any pieces? Uh, no. Well, aren't you in luck then? I got an extra set. A Tanakh original straight out of the Forbidden West. Sit, 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 sit. I'll run you through it in a hot spark. I'll give you something special if you win it on my boards, too. Let's start off simple. The Tanakhs like to say that machine strike is a game of pure strategy. We each get a set of pieces. Each piece represents a kind of machine, and each machine is worth a different number of victory points. And to win the game, you'll need to gain seven victory points by destroying the opponent's machines. It can be tricky remembering the details of every machine, so we use these notes to keep track of them. You see that number on the top right corner? That there is how many victory points you'll get for destroying that machine. Notes also tell you how far a piece can move, how powerful their attacks are, the distance they can strike from, and of course, their health. Okay, that's enough for now. Let's just play. Alex, I own the board, so since this is your first time, I'll let you go. Usually you get to choose which pieces to set on the board, but this will do for now. Pick up that. And remember, each machine can only move a certain distance. Take a Move that machine forward. It's...
Just need to... Easy enough, huh? Now, you get to move two machines each round. So go ahead and pick a second machine. Try the machine on your left. Perfect. There's not much else to do for now, so just end your turn. We're forging onwards. Let me move my pieces here. And we're back to you. This time, why don't you try attacking one of my... Try with that machine on your right first. Now move the piece close enough. When performing an attack, you'll be testing your machine. A machine's combat power is a combination of the terrain your machine and its own attack. This board only has grassland terrain, and your current machine has two points of attack power. So in total, since my machine, and just like, so right, this means your, did you get all that? Knew you were a smart one. Finish up by attacking my machine. Pulling any punches, huh? Now grab that second machine of yours. See how your machine can't move close enough? You can make it. Try it out. Downside to sprinting is that your machine can no longer attack. Now, some players like to take a risk and overcharge their machine in cases like this. Overcharging lets you attack after a sprint, but it will damage your machine's health by two points. So use at your own discretion. Let's try doing that now so you can see what I mean. That's about it for your turn, then. Now, I'll let you in on a neat trick. That machine of yours, the one closest to me, grab a hold of it. Same as in the wilds, machines have both armored points and weak point. You can see them marked on the pieces. Blue should hit them there and you'll do some damage, but not a lot. Now, red shows the machine's weak points. Hit those and you'll deal a mighty blow. Here, let me show you. Rotate that piece so your machine faces mine. It's easy. Rotate your machine for me. Gotta rotate that machine if you want to attack my piece. 
rotate that machine so it faces mine. It's easy. Rotate your machine for me. Gotta rotate that machine if you want to attack my piece. Rotate that machine so it faces mine. It's easy. Rotate your machine for me. Rotate that machine so it faces mine. Gotta rotate that machine. It's easy. Rotate. Gotta rotate that machine if you want to attack my piece. Rotate that machine. Rotate that machine so it faces. Now let that machine have it. Off the board she goes, and there's your first victory points. You don't have seven of them yet, so let's keep going. Your machine attacked mine, but hasn't moved yet. Go ahead and move downwards towards my remaining piece. You've already attacked a machine and moved your piece. But if you over and by the look of your machine's health you'd be sacrificing your piece to def but sometimes that can be an overcharge your machine to it you're still getting the hang of it i know just gotta overcharge that machine let's keep this game going overcharge your machine You're still getting the hang of it, I know. Now, overcharge and attack my machine. Let's keep this game going. Overcharge your machine. Just gotta overcharge that machine and attack mine. Attack my machine while you got the chance. You gotta attack my machine. Come on then, let my machine have it. Why not attack my machine while you got the chance? You gotta attack my machine first. Come on then, let my machine have it. You gotta attack my machine. 
Come on then, let my machine. Why not attack my machine while you got? Ain't that a thrill? Now, because your machine was knocked out at the same time as mine, we both get the victory points our machines are worth. Good news, you're gonna receive your victory points before I do. Which means you can reach the coveted seven victory points first. That's why sometimes losing a piece can be the best way to end a game in your favor. Now, you'll notice you didn't get quite up to seven victory points this time, but you did destroy all my pieces. That means you're the winner. That wasn't so hard, was it? Just remember to always check for the best terrain to attack from. You'd be surprised the advantage you can gain over an opponent like that. I know it saved my behind in a game or two. I'll try and remember that. Oh, before I forget, these are all my spare pieces. I want the savior of Meridian to have them. It's a small set to be sure, but it should be enough to get you in on any strike games you find out there. You might even fancy looking out for them strike carvers. They've got all kinds of unique pieces that can turn a game in your favor, though they'll need the right material, or you might find them in the wilds if you're lucky. I know I've lost my fair share of pieces after a night of machine hunting or brew hopping. <sighs> no need to thank me. Always a pleasure to help out new strike players. Now, if you feel like playing a real game, I've got plenty of other boards. I could even teach you a few more tricks okay. if you're up for it. Thanks. I'll think about it. Come back anytime, Red.
I'll need this. Exploring cauldrons not teach me how to override these things. Down! for when I need it. I 
I think that metal tower is giving off the signal. I could head over there, check it out. Can't arrive right now. I need to get data from the cauldron if I can find one. for these soon enough. It's a dead machine. It must be a bristleback. Maybe Errand took it down? this cliff. I wonder if there's anything interesting at the top.
looks like a wind smell. Scary rappers.
Should be enough wild meat for Mulder. Scroungers. Moldov said I could find a metal panel in one of their scrap piles.
going.
no more to fire. Okay, now to look through the scrap piles for a metal panel. Check another scrap pile. I think I have everything I need for Mildiv. Good thing, too. I can use a decent meal. This will be in my stash when I need it. place for a machine. Happen to receive another visit from Olven himself. He was pushy, but I stood my ground. And dare I say it, I even got my own back. Yes, I did. I'm listening. When I made his meal, I used three pinches of salt. Instead of two. Uh, each journey begins with a single step, I guess. I think I have everything you asked for. Then just as you have inspired me, let us see if I can return the favor. Time to cook. Wow. Mildef, that was inspired. Next time you want the best provisions, you know where to find me. And your next order of any dish will be on the house. <laughs> Thanks. And don't forget to stand up for yourself. Funny you should say that. As it happens, I'm already cooking up my next portion of resistance. Hope to see you again. Oh, 
might be a good idea to stock up on some food before I head back out. Oh, see what else. Now all your missiles can flag in a bail. The way to Baron Light is clear. Get moving. You're not Aaron Vanguardsman. I will move only when the captain when says. I cleared out all the bristlebacks, which I have. Captain's orders. So they're okay. Banged up, but breathing, and waiting up ahead for you. Well, I shall not be moving anywhere until the whistle has sounded. If it is not safe for them, then it is not safe for me. Fine. I'll make sure the whistle gets blown, and then I'll be back. Hear that? We're not leaving yet. Unpack the cart! No. I'll be right back. Don't get comfortable. As if that were possible here. Petra mentioned Olvind is supposed to be in charge around here. Guess I should talk to him to get the whistle blown. Side here, Ulvund. What do you want, Ulvund? Some kind of payment? My dear magistrate, you think I can be bought? If you want that whistle blown, all you have to do is have your soldiers remove the bristlebacks and sign the concession decree. Face it, what other choice do you have? <clears throat> Hi. Savior, what auspicious timing. Might we discuss a matter of importance to the Sundom? We might. Later. Very well. I shall be waiting. So, the savior herself. Walloper of Durval, gutter of use. Uh, maybe. I've heard many tales of your beauty and heroics, my fierce lady warrior. Olfant Freeholder, at your service. So, what could have dragged you away from the fine silks and wine of Meridian to this smudge of a settlement? Your saviorly attention must be needed elsewhere. I'm here for the embassy and- The embassy? Why, well, uh, by the forge. Ah, greater gears for greater matters. Guess that means you'll be moving on. Once I've dealt with any problems around here that need my Saviorly attention. Ah, the bristlebacks, of course. Got to get rid of them if you want that embassy to take place. Well, best get to it, hey? And off you go. Not so fast. You don't seem to have a high opinion of the magistrate? Well, I refuse to play nice to some fancy-robed parchment pusher when my fellow laborers are being bullied, intimidated, and taken advantage of. How noble of you. Noble, ha! Born with a hammer 